Well, I'd like to say one more thing before I open up for questions or comments. One of the reasons that the innate goodness practice is really tremendous, in addition to the benefits I mentioned yeah, earlier, the benefits I mentioned earlier is that uh, innate goodness is a portal. It's an opening as uh, in concentration meditation that as we get more concentrated with the innate goodness, it can lead to uh, opening of absorption with innate goodness or jhana with, with innate goodness, which is an experience that's really can be useful in our spiritual unfolding as an experience where the personality doesn't go. So we have a direct experience of what it's like to function as pure awareness and consciousness. So it's a really helpful experience to have. And that's one of the benefits that the innate goodness also affords. So I want to open it up for questions or comments, particularly if you have questions about the meditation or comments about your experience. Uh, one more thing I will say, uh, when, as I mentioned earlier, if you're, if you're having trouble making contact with innate goodness uh, for yourself, in yourself, you can always use someone uh, a pet, a child, a baby you've held at some point, really anything that in your view evokes the innate goodness. Somebody used uh, some, I can't remember what, but it was a baby animal of some kind they had seen. So anything that evokes that for you, you hold that picture of the felt sense and then make contact with, um, with that. So um, I'd like for questions, if you could unmute yourself. When I see you unmute, I'll call on you, and then you can ask a question or make your comment. Uh, Rachel? Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yeah. You know, I didn't even know I got unmuted. But I do have a question, so this is great. Yeah, you know, um, I was meditating the other day. Time I just sort of felt like my hands and my feet were sort of open for the first time. And I was just wondering if you had any comments about that, because they had always felt pretty closed. And people would say, oh, you have to feel grounded and this and that. But I never had that sensation until just this last week. So if you can speak around that, if you're interested, thank you. Sure, it's, it's probably an opening of energy channels is my guess. And uh, sometimes it happens because we have a body boundary, a perception of ourself based on our body. And that relaxes as we get deeper in meditation. And so one of the effects can be a sense of openness and groundness to the hands and feet. So that's my hunch. Okay, thank you so much. And thanks sure. for tonight. I, I really enjoyed this. I'd never done this type of meditation and I, I really could feel like I got into that sense of goodness. So thank you. Good. You're welcome. Uh, Chris? Hi, Stephen. Can you hear me okay? Yes, Chris. Okay. Yeah, thank you for that meditation. That was really interesting. Um, uh, and especially your comments just now. Uh, because I was thinking through that, well, I wasn't thinking through it because I was in it, uh, but I was actually moving from uh, innate goodness as an object of meditation to going into it and um, uh, to that sense of absorption into it. And I was thinking, my God, this, this feels like this feels like my experience of first jhana, object, focus, 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 and then going into the center. I'm, I'm used to sort of focusing on the nimitra and then going into the center of the nimitra and then, oh, no me. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. whoa, this sounds very similar. And uh, and then your comments at the end of the meditation, I thought, oh, yeah, that's on the money. Yeah, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I wanted to ask you, is innate goodness a variation on uh, bliss that you get in, like, the first jhana is, is the first – Jhana is, is bliss um, and it goes to happiness, etc. Uh, that quality is that a quality, whether it's bliss uh, or something? Can it be? Can it be tweaked? In other words, goodness can turn into bliss. And and I also noticed that it seemed to also be associated with the leading edge of now, 
this, mm-hmm. this, this absorption into innate goodness for me is experienced when I go to the leading edge of now. And the leading edge of now can be tweaked into goodness, to bliss, to peace. There's a, there's a couple of sort of var- variations mm-hmm. of it, but it's mm-hmm. really high I wonder if you could make some comments about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what, what I would say, Chris, is I, I would frame it a little differently that that innate goodness is one of the expressions of universal love. And universal love, as I mentioned before, this is the main quality of the absolute realm, is pure love and pure presence. And as we go deeper into that realm, the love is so accepting, and that acceptance has such an intensity that it can lead to the experience of cessation where consciousness and awareness itself stop. So, and that's where the center of the universe, the source and the Theravadan map. But the universal love as it comes into our our beingness or is in our beingness manifests all the kinds of qualities you mentioned, uh, bliss, joy, et cetera, and peace, serenity, all sorts of things. So I, I wouldn't view it that innate goodness changes into anything else. I would view it that universal love manifests as these different qualities and with what you just said there do any of those issues around things like consciousness space it's just the sort of stuff that's associated with the immaterial jhanas are they linked into this this experience of universal love well sure because uh the formless jhanas as we call them are, are all manifestations also of universal love but they're particular qualities. They're like the percep- the base of neither perception or non-perception is a profound non-conceptual realm. So it's a realm we experience a realm like a universe directly where there's no concept. So each of these has a particular quality and reason that we make contact and abide in them. But they're all they're all manifestations ultimately of universal love as are we. All right, right, Elaine, you're welcome. Elaine? Yes, thank you so much. That was uh, was really lovely. Um, This is more of a personal question, and um, I also put it in the chat that just in the beginning of your talk, you mentioned that you had um, studied with with a a particular kind of uh, meditation or teachers, and then you changed, and then... I think now you're you're saying Theravada, and I'm wondering what for you, but also maybe in general, what brings someone to a particular path or a teacher, and then it's changed or incorporated, and sure. how how does that is that sort of a choice, or is it sort of directed from some other place, or your teacher mm-hmm. tells you? Or? Really, it can be all the above. Sometimes I've had teachers send me to other teachers because they specialized in something that my original teacher thought would be useful. Uh, But mostly it's your own practice in your own heart. You practice with a teacher for a period of time. They may have some expertise in areas and they may not have expertise in others. And if your, your path of unfolding takes you to some of these other areas, then you need someone to guide you through that. So it's, it's really more in, in that vein, I think, following your own unfolding, following your own heart, your own heart's guidance, I would say, is what should be directing that. Activation. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. What was it like to make contact with innate goodness? What did it feel like? Any of you comment on that? Or would like to comment on that? I'm sorry, is someone speaking? Hello. Whoops. It's getting a lot of echo. I wanted to con- comment on uh, what you had just said, Stephen Snyder, about um, how did you experience it? One of the, um, what happened for me was, uh, in order to find one 
a place where I could very vividly remember my innate goodness, it was involved with somebody else. So it was uh, the goodness of the moment of experiencing a, uh, an, a real openness with the person who then became my partner uh, that I was able to see my own innate goodness. And I just wanted to, you don't have to comment much about that, but I just wanted to say that that was the experience for me that it was so much bound up in how it felt to be in this realm of bliss at a moment, a particular moment with someone else. Yeah, and, and that can be one of the ways we do make contact. It's difficult. We didn't get it mirrored when we were little, for example. We don't know how to find that, but someone else can see that in us, and their really their love is what resonates in us. So that's beautiful, mm-hmm. lovely, lovely story, and I'm glad you can make contact with that now. Thanks. It was sure. my, my wedding night. <laughs> oh, lovely, <laughs> lovely. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, sure, Car- Karsten, if I'm saying that right. Yes. Um, I, I actually had trouble with the meditation. Uh, I, I preface it by saying I, for many years, did a sort of standard Vipassana meditation in which the breath is the focus, and occasionally I've done compassion meditations. Uh, but I've never tried to meditate on innate goodness. And so when you suggested that things we could do, I went from first trying to find some moment where I felt joy, which I could sort of remember. And then that didn't quite work. So I tried to think of someone else and I tried to picture myself and I tried to picture someone else. I went through various permutations and at a certain point it just wasn't working. So I just went back to the breath. Relatively peaceful, but it wasn't, it's what I usually do. I didn't find myself moving to something else. And I was, and I wasn't sure what was stopping me from moving to something else. Uh, but that was my experience. Okay. At well, the end, it's a very peaceful meditation. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad you shared your experience. And what I'd say, if you want to pursue the innate goodness meditation, you know, look through your photo albums at home to try to find pictures, either of yourself or others, who you think capture that or look online even for pictures that evoke that for you. That's really the way to do it Mm. is to find some way Mm. that stimulates that in you, that you feel it. And that gives you the place to start because once you make contact, once it arises for you, it'll, it'll continue to arise. And I will say too, this meditation is wonderful off the cushion. I have students that are doing it when they're in their day in meetings and they're finding it really being a relationship builder. They're making more direct and personal contact with people, and it's benefiting their work situation. So don't be afraid to also take it off the cushion. Mm-hmm. Thanks very much. Uh, Judith? Um, hi, thank you. Um, yeah, this was, it was a wonderful meditation for me. One of the things that I, I found is that your direction to go toward joy, some joyful experience was, that's not, that's not a feature that, that's been a major um, theme for me. Mm-hmm. And so I, I found myself, you know, moving in different directions. Um, I think the first place that I went was like the first time I sat down to do a, something, a, a centering prayer on the words of Jesus. That's my, from my tradition. Okay. Um, as it was, it, the words were, uh, you will not always have me with you. You will, you will have the poor with you always, but you will not always have me. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And what, and sitting with that for 40 minutes, which was the instruction, um, what I found the, 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 what I found from that was this amazing sense that 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 
like God wanted to spend time with me. Right. And it was, that was, I think that was one of the most real, real powerful sense of my innate goodness. If God wanted to spend time with me, that, that, that so that was one. Well, you had some value. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise God's not going to show up. Right. Yeah. It, and, and it was, so that was, but, but then I, I, I went, I, I went around and I guess I can't, I, I don't want to talk too much, but one of the other times that I went to was um, I've, I've had, had a lot of health problems and I've been largely um, homebound for many years. And for a while I was really sick in the middle of that. And, and, um, and so it was, I was, I, I was struggling to get a sense of my innate goodness, um, be, you know, because I, I really couldn't do anything hardly. And what came to me was if I, if something that I, I, I put into a sort of a short song, if I might share that. Okay. Um, I am love, I am loving, and I am loved. Love moves within and through me. May I ever more fully welcome, celebrate, and be transformed by the reality of love in my life. Beautiful. I I, thank you, Judith. I, 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 I don't know. I had a sense of, I think, I, I think, is that sort of getting at this concept of innate goodness? I don't right. know. I mean, that was, I just. Well, th- well, think about Jesus' statement, I am the way. And if the I does not re- does not refer to a personality at all, what's the M? And you don't need to answer, but it's a ponderable yeah. question. What is I am the way if I is not a person? And let me really focus on am. That's the that's the pivot. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. You're welcome. And okay. I guess one other. Uh, Go ahead. Other question is, could you talk a little about, like, what is jhana? I, I hear people sure. talking about that. So sure. It, it's a level of concentration meditation. There are three levels, momentary concentration, which all meditations have. In, con- in concentration meditation, we stay with one object, one meditative object to the exclusion of all else. The next level is access concentration, where we're able to stay with our, our object for five to 15 minutes at a minimum. And that's true in every meditation also. And then finally, concentration meditation only has a third level, which is absorption, where you absorb into the object of your meditation. So there's a, it's a non-dual experience, meaning it's not, it's not divided. There's a oneness, an undivided wholeness that's part of the experience. So that's what jhana is. Oh, thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, Yes, thank you. I just wanted to share an observation of my experience. I'm not sure where it fits in with all this, but um, my father and I, my my mother died when I was kind of young and my dad never remarried. And so I went through adolescence and college and all that good stuff, uh, having my dad as my um, primary parent. And as one would expect, we had our ups and downs, but, you know, we never like had a falling out or like, you know, to the degree whereby like, I don't ever want to talk to you or I'm disinheriting you or anything like that, but we had some really tough times. And um, he's the person who kept coming into my meditation. And um, the image that he presented in the meditation was um, my dad lived a long life and passed away in his late eighties. And he was a few days short of passing. And um, I was there with him and I said to him, well, you know, dad, um, 
I know there's been times when I've disappointed you, but <laughs> he never let me get past the but. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, he interrupted me and he said, I cannot think of a time when you have ever disappointed me. Oh, beautiful. And I thought, what a gift Mm -hmm. Um, from a dying man who wanted to leave his daughter with uh, that thought. So I think it does fit with this. Um, I just wanted to share it as a story. And uh, I think it's I think it's clear why he came up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So he's there the whole time. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Rick? How about uh, okay? That so then, yes, I think it's in the now. Is yes, Rick. Yes. Oh, good. Can you can you hear me? Yep. Okay. So so first, uh, I, I really want to thank you, Stephen, for um, a very for me a very unique and wonderful thing experience. I've never tried. Innate, good, innate goodness as a, as a meditation. And, and I'm a beginner anyway, in terms of meditation. I normally kind of focus on the breath and body and things like that. Sure. So it's interesting that um, you mentioned to one of the other persons that if you, if you want to try this some more, you can like look through some your photo albums or go online. And uh, that's actually what I did um, just kind of spontaneously in, in the meditation. My imagination is somewhat limited. And so, so a lot of times if I'm trying to remember a particular experience, that's what comes to mind is some picture in an mm-hmm. album. And um, what I was drawn to were pictures, um, at least initially, of myself and, and my son uh, on the beach building sand castles or um, we had some one experience where we the three of us my my wife and my son and I uh, went on this incredible hike in 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 uh, Kauai to this uh, this waterfall and such and and the two of us uh, Kyle and I were were swimming in this in this pool and um, yeah so I just you know I'm profoundly in love with my son, I, I have this sort of, I, I have a continual sense of sort of unconditional love. I say that, but I get mad a lot at him too. But there is that, there is that sense in my heart that uh, he'll, I'll always love him and, right. and, and to feel love back. And then it was kind of, it, I had this experience where um, <clears throat> I was brought much closer to the present. So he just got a new job at, at an aerospace company in Southern California, and, and he visited a couple of weeks ago, uh, the three of us, my wife and my son and I, and uh, talked to us about what, what he's doing. And, um, and so this feeling of pride. But here's the thing is that where I think it's really interesting, this, this meditation really helped me, is that my wife and I have had a lot of problems for uh, going on years and she entered into the space of the meditation and I just felt toward the end of this kind of profound love Mm -hmm. for for her and and the three of us together um, as this this family that we're we're bound in love so anyway I I just want to thank you for this um, kind of getting misty eyed but yeah good you know one of the one of the great applications of this meditation is in this situation i mean your son can become a great portal for you to make contact with innate goodness but when the time's right see about doing it for yourself and also for your wife if we can make contact with another's innate goodness and our own innate goodness it really cuts through a lot so it's a way to connect and be with what's true in another. But it sounds lovely. But uh, this is a great practice for a beginner. I, I really recommend keeping this as one of the main meditations you do for all the reasons I've said. Sure. 
Well, thanks thank for you sharing. Much. Yeah, You're welcome. You Sangamita. Yeah, very good evening. Good evening. Uh, yeah, I'm in Myanmar now, so now here is morning. So, oh, good morning. Uh, <laughs> um, this practice, contemplate on goodness, is um, the first time experience for me. So, um, when I do this practice, so I recall in my childhood when I was uh, playing with my friends in the primary school. Mm -hmm. Then I feel that at that time I could have like pure joy. It's not like, you know, after you grow up like now, um, like whatever things that you do, there must be a goal, a aim there, a purpose. Right. Then, and you have a plan. So, so many things, it is not like during your childhood, you could have just pure joy. When you play, you are really enjoying and you don't think about anything. You just focus on play, you know, in the game. Um, but um, when you say we still have like a minute and try to get close to the object, I, I do not know how to get close. Okay. Well, it's more, it's more in the doing than the understanding. So for example, in this meditation, when the innate goodness is so present, you can feel as though it's, it's another presence that's right here, normally in the heart area. And that's when we try to just rest our awareness there. So we try to just, it's an intention without technique. And that's what we approach it with. So I think try that when you feel the innate goodness really present, strongly present then just have the intention to rest your awareness there and see what happens. Mm. Okay. I have another question is that um, as you have experience in Zen mm -hmm. uh, tradition for about 20 years. So uh, what do you think about, did you come across in the Zen tradition, there are a kind of a contemplation called in Chinese is Kan Hua To. So we contemplate like in the in the silent sentence. illumination. Would this be but silent they, illumination? No, it's uh, contemplate on a sentence, like a phrase, and then oh right, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, the huato. Yeah, it's huato. Right. right, right. So what do you think about this method? We usually not found like in Theravada tradition. How no. you how you found this method? I mean. Uh, how, how how did I find the Huato method? Yes, right. And mm -hmm. how it is helpful compared to Theravada traditions, this uh, contemplation method. Right. Yeah, well, it's a different you. different tradition, and that's really got more of a function, uh, aiming people towards awakening to their true nature. Mm -hmm. So those that are drawn to it, that really feel the hunger for awakening, that really uh, want to engage in that level of tradition. I think it's a tremendous practice. Uh, I, I, I give it to some of my students who are really, really hungry for awakening as opposed to that's not really a big pull for some people. So you have to really be give practices that are suitable to the pe person's temperament and also just their, their sense of direction, their heart's direction uh, as to their own unfolding. You know, and uh, now, like after I ordained, I start to learn Buddhism in the Buddhist university. Mm -hmm. So when I, because I'm Malaysian Chinese, so uh, I know Chinese. That's why when I go through the text of La Chan Buddhism, mm -hmm. then I see about the method of the, the ancient monk, how they teach uh, the contemplation. So when I come across like Kan Hua To, this kind of method, and I try myself that I found this is um, more easy for me, like to okay. contemplate on emptiness. Okay. It, it's like it, it's work, you know, but um, yeah. it's more easy than other methods. Um, but um, I would like to know because in Zen Buddhism, the master always say the, the way of teaching is not like um, even 
within the Chinese Buddhism. It's not like other school of Chinese Buddhism where you have many doctrine, scripture, and a method mm-hmm. to follow. But in Zen, it's just like uh, very simple and it's a uh, direct way. It's really different, you know, no based on theory. Right. So, Again, it's if, if you're called there, it's a great place to practice and be. And just for those that don't know what we're talking about, the, the Huato translates mm-hmm. as, um, I, I like the term turning point. It's sort of a portal and it, it turns us towards our, our true nature and usually results in uh, or can result in awakening experiences. And it's a, it, it's a short expression like like um, Sangamita is mentioning emptiness. So one of them is what is what is emptiness? Who is emptiness? Things like this. In Chinese, I think they call it Wu. So yeah. it's so it's who is Wu or what is mm-hmm. Wu? And and anyway, you keep the question uh, basically twenty four seven. And once you exhaust your intellectual attempts to resolve it, which are never never correct, then at some point it can potentially develop to a point of uh, opening into an awakening experience. Well, thanks, Sagamita. I appreciate your questions and comments. Thank you. Uh, Be- Bevy, did you have a comment or question? How about uh, Cheryl? or Mary Ellen. Okay, I guess you don't have questions. So I just wanna mention a couple of quick things before we have a little bit of silence and you break into your uh, meeting groups. As I mentioned, um, the books I've got, I've got several books. The most recent is Buddha's Heart, which is available on Amazon, all the usual places. I've got all the book coming out next year, uh, which right now I'm calling A Stroke of Realization and talks about the Zen path to awakening and deepening awakening and realization and also the Theravadan path of awakening and deepening realization. So that, that's an, turning out to be an interesting book. I've got a website, awakeningdharma.org. Uh, you can look on there. There's talks and a variety of activities I'm doing. If you're interested in seeing more of me, I'll be doing a a three-hour Zoom benefit for Cloud Mountain Retreat Center on Friday, doing the topics of innate goodness and also leading the group through three forgiveness practices. So that'll be a really, really interesting. And and doing forgiveness practice is really important in our spiritual unfolding. And then on the 30th, I do a monthly sitting group. and, And this month on June 30th, I'm going to be Uh, talking about unity, the unity experience, and also the quality of undivided wholeness. So that'll be an interesting one as well. Uh, I do work with folks uh, by individual session on Zoom. Um, That's on my website. And you can see I was uh, interviewed uh, by Rick and his son Forrest on their their, uh, podcast. So if you're interested in hearing more, you can find me there. Um, So I think let's just go ahead and spend the last of our time here in silence together, just letting the impact, the effects, the benefit of the practice and the quality of being together, the field right now that we're sharing, the settledness, there's a good feeling of connectivity, of heart warmth. Just let that land any place it wants to in you if you're making contact with that.
Well, I just want to say thank you all for coming this evening and spending this time. I really had a wonderful time being with you. Um, somebody did ask about uh, my book coming out on Audible or audio, and that is in the works. So hopefully that'll happen in the near future. Thank you all very much and enjoy the rest of your evening. Hope to see you again. Bye now.